as you probably know, all of research is driven by hypotheses. We try to support or prove or reject or disprove hypotheses. Physicist David H. Douglas of the University of Rochester in New York said that one finds the truth by making a hypothesis and comparing observations with the hypothesis. This video will focus on defining what a hypothesis is, then differentiating between the alternative and null hypotheses. If we take the word hypothesis back to the early Greek, we find that the prefix hypo means under, below, or to put under, or to suppose. Some have reduced this to tentative. The second part of the word, thesis, means a setting down or something set down, like a general opinion or statement about the solution to a problem. Taken together, you can think of a hypothesis as a tentative statement about the solution to a problem. More specifically, a hypothesis is a tentative prediction, often about the nature of the relationship between two or more variables. To be considered a hypothesis, a statement should be both testable and falsifiable. Testable means that there must be some way to collect the data to evaluate the research hypothesis. Now, there are a variety of reasons we might not be able to test a research hypothesis. We might not have the technology, for example. There are some things we really can't study. Right now, the technology does not exist that will enable me to read your mind, so I couldn't test the hypothesis that you might be finding this video fascinating. I can make a guess, but as I can't reliably test it, it wouldn't be considered a good hypothesis. Related to technology, we may not have the resources to test a hypothesis. Again, some things we can't study. The technology may exist, but you may not be able to afford it in terms of time and money, a very real concern if you fit the stereotype of a poor, starving college student with many demands on your time. Ethics come into play as well. There are some things that we've agreed are unethical to study, what we shouldn't study. If I wanted to test the impact of deception on young children, for example, I want to know what types of deception would create long-lasting negative effects, well, can't you imagine what the news media would say about that? Falsifiable means that there is some possibility that the research hypothesis could be wrong. Remember, we are going to test that research hypothesis. A hypothesis is a guess about what you will find when you complete your research and data analysis. A research hypothesis predicts a specific outcome. For example, completing practice problems improves test scores is a research hypothesis that could be right or wrong. But the hypothesis that completing practice problems either improves test scores or it doesn't isn't a falsifiable research hypothesis because it will always be correct. The entire research process revolves around hypotheses. Hypothesis testing involves the careful construction of two statements, the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. Let's start with the alternative hypothesis, which tends to be much more straightforward and what you're most likely thinking of right now. Let's say you're planning to play blackjack or 21 at a casino. You are hoping that you're good enough at cards to win more often than you will lose. You hypothesize, then, that you are a good card player. That's what you are hoping your research will prove. Now, prove is in quotes here because you really can't prove anything. You can only disprove something. But you can show support for it. So now let's turn next to the null hypothesis. This is a bit trickier to explain because there are really two views to this. The first is that the null hypothesis is kind of the opposite of the alternative hypothesis. I say kinda, because in this view, the null often refers to the common view of something, while the alternative hypothesis is what you really think is the case, or what you want to prove, your prediction as to what you think you will find. Using the card game example, the null hypothesis would be that you are an average card player, the common view, and the alternative hypothesis is that you are a good card player. In this case, the null is not really the opposite of the alternative, because that would be that you are a bad card player. Essentially, in a court of law, the common view is that unless we can prove you guilty, you are presumed not to be guilty. In reality, if you are acquitted, it's really not because you were proven innocent, but that it wasn't proven that you were guilty. So in this case, the alternative hypothesis would be that you are guilty, while the null hypothesis would be that you are not guilty. 
The second view is that everything has to do with chance and the likelihood that what you found was not real at all. It was just chance or coincidence. Either your research findings occurred by chance or coincidence, or what you found did not occur by chance. You know that even if you're not a good blackjack player, you could end up winning a game or two or three. The cards might have just been right, your fellow card players weren't very good, some might call it beginner's luck. Any number of things could have happened to produce the result that you won at cards. That doesn't necessarily mean that you are a good card player. Your wins, or the results, could have been due to chance. In this view, the null hypothesis says that your findings occurred by chance. The alternative hypothesis is what you found was real. It did not occur by chance. In the case of playing cards, your alternative hypothesis would be that you are a good card player. And the null hypothesis is that your game results were just due to chance. In this view, the null is really not the opposite of the alternative hypothesis, because your alternative hypothesis could just as easily be that you are a bad card player. The null is just saying that you can't use your results to support or even reject your alternative hypothesis because you can't trust that what you found is real. Your findings may be due to chance. It really doesn't matter which view you subscribe to because the rule in statistics is the same. The only way to support your hypothesis is to refute or reject the null hypothesis. That means that rather than trying to prove your idea, the alternative hypothesis, correct, you must show that the null hypothesis is likely to be wrong. You have to refute, nullify, or rule out the null hypothesis. Now the key is that you have to assume that your alternative hypothesis is wrong until you find evidence to the contrary. You are never trying to prove or support the null hypothesis. It's just that the null is presumed to be correct unless you can prove it to be wrong. Say you have an alternative hypothesis, what you're hoping your data will support or prove, that males and females have different opinions as to what the most popular rides are at Disneyland. You ask 10 of your friends, probably not the best research design, but it's an example, and you find out that your male friends named Splash Mountain as the most popular ride, and that your female friends thought the It's a Small World attraction was the most popular. One view, then, is that you can't trust your findings, that the answers that you got occurred by chance. Again, note that in this view, the null hypothesis isn't saying that males and females don't have different opinions as to the most popular Disneyland attractions, just that your findings aren't outside the realm of chance or circumstance. We can't use your data to support your hypothesis. Your findings could just as easily come back that males and females hold the same opinions, which actually could support another alternative hypothesis. The other view is that the null hypothesis is the opposite of the alternative hypothesis. The alternative hypothesis says that you think there will be a difference in opinions based upon sex. The opposite would be that there is no difference in opinions based upon sex, making this the null. But it really doesn't matter which view you accept, because unless you can reject the null hypothesis, regardless of its form, you can't accept the alternative hypothesis. Processing time. What are the two requirements of a research hypothesis? What is the alternative hypothesis? Say you hypothesize that when a song from a Disney movie wins an Academy Award, Disneyland will see an increase in attendance. What would be the null hypothesis? Now you will probably agree with physicist David Douglas when he said it is absolutely essential that one should be neutral and not fall in love with the hypothesis. With the solid foundation of the differences between the alternative and null hypothesis, you should be better equipped to understand the different types of errors in hypothesis testing. 